Hello and welcome to our second NV Sarscape analytic walkthrough. In this video, we're going to go through the time series tool, which is one of the new automatic Sarscape workflows. This tool uses multiple SAR images from different dates, does all of the pre-processing, and then pulls out important statistical changes in the intensity. This is commonly used for monitoring of surfaces, or in this example, we're going to be looking at agricultural fields in France using Terrasar X imagery. SAR monitoring of agriculture is highly useful, as areas that grow crops commonly have rain or cloud cover that we can see through with SAR imagery. We can also get information on the physical growth cycles of the crops and the status of the fields themselves through the SAR waves interaction with the ground and vegetation surface. All right, let's get started. So I'm gonna open up the SAR time series tool. And the first thing we're going to need to do is input our multiple SAR images. So these don't have to be put in, in the order of the images, such as May, June, July, etc. Uh, that will all be picked up automatically from the metadata. And you want to have at least three different images for this analysis to work very well. All right, and with those chosen, we can hit OK. You can choose an area of interest if you want to cut down on the size. And similarly to the previous video, we can either automatically extract a DEM use a previously related Sarscape compatible DEM or a DEM TIFF file. Finally, we can choose our output folder and what we want to do with our intermediary outputs. Then we can hit OK and start processing. So we'll be able to see the processing happening on the screen. And when this is running, this is going through all the different pre-processing for the images and then going through and pulling out important statistical changes that are occurring in between each image. So we'll let that run a little bit longer. So we're going to go down the list of our outputs that are on the left hand side. And as you can see, we have a lot of different information, things from covariance, the gradient, standard deviation, that's giving us a lot of background on what's actually happening on this small portion of these fields. So you can look at these grayscale statistical changes that are occurring uh, and do comparisons between them, such as where we're having the largest amount of change. You can easily see in the covariance, which was the previous one, where all the trees were, which are the big white, uh, white areas. And you can also go in using the NV tools and gain information here, which can be used for things like classification or analysis of what's happening in the fields themselves. Besides those, we also have inputs such as the maximum and minimum amplitude, or max date and min date, as it's called on the sidebar. These show when the fields had a maximum and minimum intensity or amplitude response, which can give us a lot of information on what's happening in the fields themselves. In cereal fields, it's very common that the minimum date is related to the sowing stage, or when the uh, crops are planted, and the maximum date is related to when they're either harvested or when they're growing over time. And so with this kind of information, we can really pull out what's happening on these fields when optical imagery wouldn't be able to see them because there might be clouds or rain as what's necessary for a field. And lastly, we have our covariance minimum gradient output that shows all the different changes that are occurring. And that will be the end of our second NV Sarscape analytic. I look forward to seeing you guys for the next one.